What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and the Bloom Uncounted clan has just landed, so today I'm gonna break them down, talk about which one I think is better, the male or the female, and what traits I think go best on them. But first, download Jumpstone Legends, a mobile RPG puzzle match game. Use the link in the description to start with free stuff, including a bonus hero. All right, so right off the bat, I just want to give props to the designers because the art is absolutely amazing for both the male and the female. You can tell they put the extra time into making them look really nice this time around. And honestly, I think they're looking like they can make some pretty cool hybrids, so I'm excited for that. Of course, this is personal preference, so let me know in the comments what you think about the art, but I am loving it. Uh, I did want to take a look at the trait for both the male and the female uh, before we get started here. It's called adjudication. Um, because this is going to help determine whether it's worth it to get the companion or not. An adjudication uh, states that the next attack deals additional damage equal to 86.67% or higher if you have a higher rarity champion of the champion's strength and the cooldown is 6 seconds. So that to me sounds like a really powerful trait. Like really powerful. Like I want to put this on every DPS champion I have. Um, think like Tide Storm or something like that that just deals an absolutely absurd amount of damage. Yes, <laughs> this is a really strong trait that I think makes it likely you want the companion just for the trait. Now, of course, if the champions are actually good, you also want the companion to be able to feed them fodder and get their stars up as high as you can. All right, this is just an epic champion though, but let's go take a look at the renowned uh, champions because I want to see what they look like maxed to determine if I want to put all those resources into a uh, champion like this. I'm going to take a look at the female first. So let's uh, break her down and then I'm going to talk about what traits are going to go well on both the male and the female at the end of this video. Um, starting off here, Entrancing Strike gains a temporary immune effect. Remember that, that's powerful. Uh, and shuttles behind an, a random enemy dealing damage equal to 380% of the champion's strength to all enemy targets along the path. If the target has five layers of dream effect, they will be consumed to inflict sleep for four seconds, dealing damage equal to 100% of the champion's strength, restoring their energy by 100. The target in sleep will be immune to dream effect for eight seconds. So we got a couple things going on here. I know it's a lot of words. It seems like every time a new special comes out, we're like having to read a chapter of a book to figure out what the heck they're doing. But uh, basically, um, you've got some immunity going on here. We know that's strong. We know that's really, really strong. Then, of course, dealing damage. And 380% can be a lot, you know, if you really want to work on that attack stat uh, as far as the traits go. Um, and then there's sleep, which is a crowd control type of effect, uh, or CC effect, you'll see some people say. Um, because, of course, if your opponents are sleeping, they're not attacking, they're not using their specials. Um, and for four seconds, that's, that's a lifetime in this game. Four seconds is often like half a battle or more. <laughs> so um, that is a really powerful special right off the bat. And then uh, just on top of it, go ahead and restore some energy, right? <laughs> Let's take a look at the alt. And these alts and specials like work together. So Shattered Dreams is the alt. Cast Dream Seeds across the battlefield and once per two seconds over the next eight seconds, randomly picks an enemy target to inflict one layer of dream. While active, increases the champion's attack by 30%. When the champion is attacked, they will become invincible invincible for a short duration and teleports towards the attacker dealing damage equal to 300% of the champion's strength to it and all nearby enemy targets. This effect can be triggered for up to three times for the duration. All right, so now we've just read that this champion can get immunity and now it can get invincible. And the ultimate is working with the other specials to inflict dream and sleep on the opponents, meaning that they're not playing the game and you're not dying <laughs> if you have her. This is sounding like a really powerful combo to me. Um, and uh, just taking a, a little bit deeper of a look here, um, you can see that uh, with in Invincible and Immunity thinking ahead to some of the traits, um, you might not even need to put protective traits on a champion like this. You know what I mean? Like honorable, energetic, any kind of defensive trait that's going to keep her alive because she might not die anyway. Um, but I do have to say, just taking a look at what we've read so far, she could be a little bit of a glass cannon type of champion, as in when those 
protective specials are going off, she ain't going to die. She ain't even going to take damage. <laughs> but if the opponents happen to get her before she gets those off, she might just die. Anyway, let's take a look at the last effect. Dreamwalker. Hunts down the target in the opposite position. If the target is out of reach, the champion will charge toward their location, dealing damage equal to 200% of the champion's strength to the target and all nearby enemies, inflicting two layers of dream. Other enemy targets along the charge path will be inflicted with one layer of dream and knocked back. When the champion deals damage, inflicts one layer of dream on the target with each layer, reducing the target's attack speed by 5% and movement speed by 4.28%. When the champion, um, I'm sorry, when the target has five layers of dream, the champion immediately casts their active skill on them. So you can see all three of these abilities are working together. And this is a mouthful, but when it's all said and done, what she's doing is zipping across the board, putting the opponents to sleep, and probably staying alive because <laughs> of immunity and invincible. Um, and uh, she has the potential, especially if she gets underneath the opponent's... Uh, the other opponent's specials, as in, like, she goes off first. There's not going to be a lot the opponents can do about this. Um, so she's zipping around, putting opponents to sleep, and not dying. And among it all, she's dealing a, a good amount of damage. Like, I wouldn't say that the damage I'm seeing here is extraordinary. She's not probably going to be the top damage dealer. But you put her on a team with one or two champions that's there to finish the opponents off. I think that's a powerful combination. Um, so she's looking really, really good. When we're thinking ahead to traits, I'm thinking I want to make her as fast as I possibly can because one thing I do worry about with her is that the dream effect could be too slow. If you're just waiting for a dream to be spread out, it's entirely possible that the other team could get all their specials off before she's able to do what she's supposed to do. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's look at the mail first, and then we'll decide on traits. All right, so... The male, ethereal charge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All this text. I apologize. I'm going to try to read through this fast and then summarize. The champion disappears into thin air and creates a phantom near each of the three farthest champions, including the champion themselves and two clones. The three phantoms will taunt the target for a short duration. Clones will inherit 100% stats from the champion. What? <laughs> That's awesome. But their damage taken increases by 60%, so there is a drawback there. Um, within 10 seconds, after the Phantoms show up, their attack speed increases by 20%, and their attacks have 10% lifesteal effect. I love that. That's really cool. Clones can use the champion's normal attacks and active skills, who will strike all targets in front for four times, dealing total damage equal to 392% of the champion's strength. That has the potential for a whole lot of damage, just saying. Um, clones will disappear when they are killed or the duration ends as long as the clones are present. 50% of the damage taken by the champion will be shared by the clones. Okay, so that's a, that's a protective factor potentially. You know, when we're talking clones and phantoms and stuff like that and all these guys are appearing all over the battlefield. Well, um, first of all, any damage that's being dealt is going to get spread out and that means it's more likely your champion's going to stay alive. But second of all, for any like DPS champion, like a, a one-shot type of uh, champion like Tidestorm, for example, man, you are really protected against that because he might just take out a clone or something like that and it doesn't mean much. You like almost totally neutralize a champion like uh, Tidestorm. But... <laughs> when you're creating all these phantoms and and uh, uh, clones and things, you do have to worry about a relatively new hero, which is the male Samir. And it's because of his ultimate here, which uh, basically he gains energy whenever he's defeating opponents. So now you're putting opponents all over the battlefield for him to basically just go off like a strobe light using his special. Just saying. So this creates a really cool rock, paper, scissors type of situation with this champion where like he's going to be really good against one type of hero like male tidestorm and maybe potentially bad against a champion like male samir so keep that in mind because it isn't going to be like with these heroes coming out that you can just pop them in anywhere you want and go like you are going to have to think about where you're positioning them and what your team makeup is which i love that brings a lot of depth to the game okay the ultimate shimmering lunge Locks onto the target 
and then summons three phantoms to attack the target from multiple directions, each dealing damage equal to 200% of the champion's strength. If the clones from the skill Ethereal Charge are present, they will also summon phantoms and attack their targets. If this skill kills a target, the champion immediately restores 15% of max health. Love it. Love it. <laughs> that is awesome. And then uh, lastly, Peerless Flight. I think they took... Um, some of the the words from this special and put it all in that first one we covered but uh guarantees to dodge a skill hit once per five seconds interesting especially when you already got a bunch of clones and phantoms running around um if the champion takes damage when the skill is in cooldown immediately reduces its cooldown by six percent um and so that's a pretty simple one but uh not one to be overlooked as well all right so what do i think about these who's better and what traits do we put on them? Well, it is really hard to say right now who's going to be better. I, I will suffice it to say both the male and the female look really powerful. And to me, that means it's worth summoning for because you have choices. Then you can, you can at least get both the male and the female. Maybe wait to test. Let other people put videos out, things like that, which I'm certainly going to do. So make sure you're, you're subscribed see which one looks more powerful, and then make your decision from there. But I can guarantee you both the male and female look fantastic. Um, and they're going to be used for different things. So, for example, the female is more of a crowd control type of champion um, in that she's going to put her opponents to sleep and not die. So she's really of a support type champion that I still think is going to deal a good amount of damage. The male, I think, is going to deal a great amount of damage. I think he's like a... AOE type of he's like a sneaky AOE type of champion with all the clones and phantoms and all that going on a lot of damage is going to come through this guy and he does have a protective factor while I wouldn't call it crowd control um <laughs> it is kind of cool as an assassin he's got all these other little guys running around to take the damage so that he and your other more valuable champions don't take that damage so dealing a lot of damage and soaking up a lot of damage and he's healing on top of it I mean I think this is great um, I think this is uh, really great, and it's hard for me to say which one's better. I personally am going to lean towards the male right now because I've found um, that his effect is so unique that it's going to complement really well some of the things that I like to do. Now, I am much more of a nuke team type of person, so I want all that damage. I want to protect my nukers, which are glass cannons. They've got high attack and really powerful damage dealing specials all around, but they often die easily too. So I think that he's going to help with that. I'm leaning towards male, but I can totally see the arguments for the female being the best one as well. Um, I think the trend on day number three, which today is of the champion being released is a lot of, a lot more people are trying the female. Um, and so more people seem to be leaning towards female. You let me know in the comments, which you think is better in the long term and especially in what setups, but that's what I'm going to do. Uh, as far as traits go, um, I think you want the female to be faster. I'm going to switch back to her real quick. Uh, I think you want her to be as fast as you can possibly get her, uh, because her special is a little bit slower in spreading the dream out and trying to put opponents to sleep. And if she happens to be one that's not getting the sleep off as fast as all the other champions, and there's almost no point in having her there. So I would absolutely go with agile, focused, and there's even a case to be made to put ambitious on this particular champion. Um, and then for that last slot, I would go with brutal. Um, so those are the four that I think are a great start for her. But the one that I'm not as confident about is the ambitious one. I think you might have to test that out. Maybe see how it is with agile and focused first. And if she needs to be a little faster, go with that ambitious. But if you're not going to go with ambitious, another great one to go with is aggressive. Um, and just getting that extra uh, damage percent, if you will. Because uh, she's going to deal a lot of damage along the way too. You might want that... Um, or you could go with Fierce. Um, that's another one you could potentially go with, too. It's a little easier to put on than Aggressive. Uh, now, for the male... Um, oh, by the way, one more thing about the female. Notice I didn't say any of the defensive traits. Honorable, Energetic, or anything else. Because of the Immunity and Invincible. I don't think it's needed. Um, 
But if she gets hit before she's able to go invincible or put the opponents to sleep, she is going to die really easy. She's a glass cannon. Um, so now for the male. I would treat him a little different because all those little phantoms and clones and stuff like that that are out there, they're, they're attacking and that's where aggressive is a lot more powerful because it's culminating in a much quicker increase to the attack. So for that reason, I would go with focused, agile, aggressive, and brutal. I think this guy has the potential to deal an enormous, enormous amount of damage if you put those traits on. But again, he's going to become a little bit of a glass cannon. So if he gets hit, he's probably going to die pretty easily. But now there's a lot more targets running around on the battlefield too. So it's making it less likely he will get hit. That's just my thought. That's my opinion. You let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, and I will catch you in the next one.